I have with me renowned cricketer Farvez Maroof. What do you think is the future of veteran cricket? I think the future is bright. Uh, you know, Veterans Premier League, which is coming up, Bharat Veterans Premier League. I think it's a nice concept where former international stars comes back to comes back to the field. Uh, you know, there are so many big names going to start. And as as I said in my previous interviews as well, it's something that uh, as fast players we like to do get back to get back to the field and you know share our share our talents and moments with the present uh, Indian domestic cricketers and few of the Ranji Trophy players as well. So it's nice to get back. Maybe the body may be not up for it, but definitely the heart is. And uh, thanks to uh, the organizers of uh, Bharat Veteran Premier League, I think I'm very excited. What is your advice to the young players who are coming on field now? I mean, there's not, sh not much to advise. I mean, they are doing it perfectly fine. Lots of opportunities for youngsters with so many leagues around the world, especially with India. You know, so many, so many opportunities with Ranji Trophy uh, being, the, uh, being the benchmark. Then you got the IPL as a pinnacle, then the national team. So I think, you know, these days youngsters have a lot of opportunities. So I think it's all about going out there, showing your talent and enjoying the moment. That's very important. Cricket is a game, you know, you put extra pressure to yourself. You know, you, most of the time you fail. So you enjoy life. Just go out there, have fun. I think most of the time you will be successful. Wishes for the World Cup, which is just around the corner? Wishes for the World Cup? Um, I mean, definitely I hope Sri Lanka does well. <laughs> That's number one. But I think it'll be tough with so many good teams. Uh, Sri Lanka recently have not been that consistent. But you have some good teams who have done recently well, uh, consistently well. Teams like India, Australia, uh, England have been uh, in the front runners. So I think Sri Lanka, for me, will be un underdogs, dark horses, you may say it. But uh, I think of, you know, definitely India and England will start as favourites. So what do you think is the future of veteran cricket in India? It's actually uh, quite massive. Uh, knowing the country as big as we are, uh, veterans cricket uh, moment will be uh, seriously a serious future for us. You know, and uh, at BBCI we are looking at actually enhancing the entire idea and expanding the, on the idea of veterans cricket going forward. How do you plan to do that? Well, we have a number of programs. So we we're starting with uh, over 40, over 50, over 60. And we are hoping to have the World Cup, um, hopefully, next year. If not the World Cup, at least we'll have a quadrilateral, uh, you know, between, between good nations, you know, particularly England. Uh, it could very well be Australia, England, Bangladesh, and the neighboring countries to start with. But obviously our vision would be towards World Cup uh, for the veterans. Uh, maybe over 50 or over 60. So we'll, we have yet to decide on that. Also, would you like to give wishes to the World Cup team? The C uh, World Cup is happening in a few days from now. Certainly. I, I wish, on behalf of the BBCI, uh, uh, all the great wishes for the World Cup. Thank you. I have with me renowned cricketer Atul Vasan. So, we are here for the BBCI uh, auction that are taking place, BBCL auctions. What do you think is the future of veteran cricket in India? So first of all, it's quite a generic and you know broad-based statement. You know, future of veterans. Actually, veterans was the word used for uh, World War II veterans. You know, I think we should call it seniors. And we used to play when I retired. Uh, you know, Chetan Chauhan was there, and we used to have matches with Pakistan. Used to come, Sri Lanka used to come, and we used to have uh, you know the, these regular series. And uh, I played most of it that time, early uh, 2000. But then it just suddenly you know, phased out because of the current uh, rush when T20 came in. So, uh, you know, the market didn't have the, uh, you know, the stomach to absorb this cricket. But now suddenly so many channels have come and they need uh, properties, you know, they need content. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity for players and, and 40 is the new 30 now, you know. So and so even 40 plus players uh, and these are the players who were journeymen, you know, they didn't become big or big, you know, big stars or maybe didn't play many first class games also. But now they want to continue playing. And they get to get to play like this. They get money, get uh, notice. So I think it's it's a uh, dream come true. And somehow I'm a bit envious that it came probably 10 years too late. <laughs> <laughs> so you yourself a veteran. You know, you, though you don't like that word and you have objected to it, but you you are someone who's been famous for his cricketing prowess. What is your advice to the young cricketing team? Well, young, you know, actually this our system is too good now. You know, the infrastructure in India. And that's why you see, the, you know, the players coming through. We used to look at Australia earlier on and we used to be jealous, you know, how, how the structure is. Because in spite of having a small population, 
the net was spread so nicely that no talents used to strip through. Our thing, I think Dhoni changed it. You know, for the bigger, before you see the Indian team used to be Mumbai and, and Delhi, most of it. An odd player from, you know, so now suddenly you see players from hinterland, you know, kahan se aara, kahan se aara. then that thing, Mahindra Singh Dhoni was the catalyst, you know, then now, and even in those places, because earlier on there was no facility, no good coaches, so if you had to play, you had to gravitate towards big metros. Now you can be there, and I think BCC has, has gone wide, they've got NCAs all over, and, uh, and no talent can slip through, and the structure, and then look at the numbers, you know, 150 million, you know, 1.34 billion people. And uh, and if we are not number one in all formats, it's a shame. If you could give some wishes to the World Cup teams, because World Cup is just around the corner. Well, I think um, um, more than wishes, uh, they will need luck. Of course, the wishes are there. You know, we want uh, India to win uh, because um, uh, you know, uh, me and Kapil work together every day. We are there, and you know, and somehow we won World Cup in 2011. But that 83 is etched in my mind. You know, something. It was a. It's it's, it's a turning point of everybody's life and probably the prosperity we see, the confidence we see and we look at young kids struck about, you know, because of that, because we thought we could be world champions, you know, and I think that feeling this team is giving, but somehow they flattered to deceive, you know, and it is so bitter because we just build it up and Indian partisan fan thinks, you know, we have won here, we have bilateral series, we have Virat Kohli's go so many runs and we are good, no, cricket is a team sport. So, you know, uh, so at home, if, you, if, you, if they don't win, or even they reach the finals, because winning is, uh, they're not, no team is that good to be considered like West Indies used to be. So big pressure on Rohit and, and Virat Kohli. So I think uh, conditions due, and uh, you know, on that day, so a lot of things have to fall into place. Mr. Hassan, thank you so much for speaking to CNN News 18 at a time when these auctions are taking place. This is an important voice coming in only on CNN News 18.